Pippa means my life. And the sound, it's history. Mm -hmm. Because of the shape, someone says, uh, it looks like the uh, teardrops of women. Um, my instrument is, came from China in the 7th century. This instrument is used for the Buddhism ceremonies and also Shintoism ceremonies. So it is quite religious and spiritual. This is like a voice of the soul and also kind of tool to connect with the nature or maybe in Western way it's a little bit like a god. Because in Japan, God means also the whole nature thing, not only the one God, but everything is a God. Garana, Shatsili, Gothic, Makna Hayastano, Efima, and Bochme and Hayastano. Duduk Hai Martu Kormit, Shatan Tumvasmi, Navagarane, Ev Duduk, I saw Aras Duduki, Hai Martir, Kanka Chikar of Patkirasner. Azerbaycan'da bir e, sıra halk talga aletler var. Onlardan biri de esaslarından biri kemançadı. Kemançanın sesi insan sesine en yakın aletin sesidir. İnsan sesine çok yakındı. İsti sesi var yani bir zamlıdı. E, kemança benden kenarda dövünen yüreğimdi böyle diyerdim. and the Kamencha and the Arhu and, you know, all these different sounds with all these cultures and flutes and oboes, you know. So that became the Atlas Ensemble. For me, the oboe is a, is a very lyrical, expressive instrument, extremely... Uh, intense quality of sound, which links to my inner musical feeling, if I, maybe I should say it like that. <laughs> the difference between people, the, between, between cultures, is what we will treasure the most in this utopian space. The Sarangi is life. The struggles and tribulations of life, the basic sufferings of life. When it achieves critical mass, this kind of sweetness comes to life. And that sweetness stays with us till the end of our days. And the sarangi amply symbolizes that for me. I 
I like to combine things that are impossible to combine and bring them together and see if it's possible to, that it works. And that's uh, something, I don't know why that is, but already from a long time. And in a way, musically that happens, but also humanly. I think Erhu is a part of Chinese culture. In Chinese culture, in the moment, it is a very important part of Chinese culture. 它充满着很多很多的，呃，文化的色彩在里面。我觉得二胡应该是另一个自己，呃，他能完全明白我心里所想，所以当我在演奏二胡的时候，就是等于在跟另一个自己在说话。I play a wood. It's me. If I am nervous, tensed, angry, warm, everything, every emotion I can feel, uh, I feel that my instrument is replying. Well, in the Atlas Academy, we bring musicians from all over the world together with composers, and we try to understand each other's music and work together to make new music. And that is very interesting because you have all these different cultures with their traditions. So there's a lot to learn, and it's very, very rich, and it's very adventurous. To be a musician, the most important thing should be listening to your heart, to your imagination. For me, Pippa, she's like my, my twin sister. I cannot imagine uh, how I can live without it. Uh, I felt more close um, even than anybody else. Sometimes I feel it like uh, a strong man, mm -hmm. and sometimes I can feel it as a warm man or woman, you know. So uh, after all, it's me how I I feel in this moment. <laughs> So, so in fact, you um, for wood playing, you need the different color of yes. up and down. I, okay, but for pipa uh, training, we 
we need to we need them to be the same. Absolutely, absolutely the same. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pipa was introduced through the Silk Road from from Persian world in Tang Dynasty. So Pipa itself has the character of uh, Middle East taste. So I can imitate the wood uh, musical language easily. If you start by D. Mm -hmm. We have the same uh, as the, um, key system in China also. It doesn't matter you are Western or you are Chinese, you have different viewpoint from the musicians. Even though mm, you can ignore the uh, the cultural background of this of this instrument, but you need really you need to mm, to be very close to the sound to the instrument itself. You need to touch it. You need to play it by yourself. Only one centimeter, uh, not more, of oh. left. As a musician, my goal is to meet uh, other musicians, um, other culture, other civilization. And that's what is happening in the frame of Atlas Academy. I made the progress in this academy. And I learned from the foreign uh, musicians. I got more um, who I am and where I can go in future. is the, the, the father and is also called the king of instruments, the sultan of the instruments in the Middle East. And then it traveled through the Silk Road to the Far East, became the pipa. In China, it's the biwa. To the West, it became mandolin, or first lute, of course, and mandolin. And what is so interesting, all these instruments transformed in the culture where they arrived. So you can see, and you can also hear, that an oud is very Middle Eastern in shape, very uh, ornamented and so on. But also it has no frets because they use microtones. And in China, of course, they put frets because they have a different culture. So the function of the instrument is connected with the music they want to play. When I start to play the show, I'm, I'm not playing the show, but the show asked me to make a sound with the instrument. I'm dedicated to the instrument, so it's not um, myself anymore, somehow. 
I think that's the reason why I'm closing my eyes. My instrument is used for gagaku music, which is a court music, so it's very traditional. In the gagaku orchestra, each instrument has their own character or role in the ensemble, and show is the air and the voice of the heaven, connecting between the heaven and the earth. In the contemporary music, of course, I have to ask the show to play more than what we can do uh, on the traditional music, because I'm educated as a saxophonist, so I'm also trying to be a connection point of the traditional musicians and the Western musicians. Martu Kormits, Shatan Tuvas, me Navagarane, Vora Navagumen, the Ugapuchuneri Zamonak, the Handisuchuneri Zamonak, the Tahuchuneri, the Hammer Neri, the Yevduduka, my sor, Aron Duduki, Hai Martir, Kanka Chikar of Patkerasner. It's part of my body, this instrument. It's the way I want to express myself. I cannot imagine uh, what I do playing it on a, on a, on a flute. The instrument itself has a, a certain um, sound characteristic which brings, I think, in many cultures the same emotional baggage with it. And that's why I think that sometimes it's not so far apart as one thinks. I 
կարծում եմ ապացույցներ երկու ժողովների հայերի եւ ճապոնացիների այդ համամարտկային միասնության մասին։ Kichiriki. Yeah, it's in China, it's called Pili, also in Korea. Same so, yeah. instrument? Yeah, but it's much shorter. Chinese and, yeah. instrument short. Yeah, also the Japanese <coughs> one it's, uh, has very strong voice. So, but the Duduk has a so warm sound, and I really, I was very sure that it fit very well with my instrument. So. Interesting, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, now, uh, what are you doing this? Well, I have to warm up the instrument because the instrument has to be dry all the time. I have a lot of leaves inside of the instrument. Mm. It, and it's, yeah, and this I is the reed. Yeah. Sizes, yes. yeah, it's so mm. different <laughs> from yours. <laughs> it's the same material, I think, yeah? Bamboo? Or? Yeah, this is bamboo. Uh, it's also. Ah, this is bamboo. Same material. Is Armenian bamboo is Japanese bamboo. Bamboo music. What do you make in vibrato? I use a tongue. In tongue? <laughs> I, in vibrato, I play in lips. Lips, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah working Together, so <laughs> busy. <laughs> in the Japanese style. Very long. Well, in a way, uh, you have globalization and all the danger. And also in Beijing, you have McDonald's. And everywhere where you step out of an airplane, the situation is the same. So it's really weird. And what we, with the Atlas Ensemble, try to do, and I think that's, that's one of the big uh, issues today, that you look for the diversity. So the, the good thing of the globalization is that you can have all these contacts and all these influences, and yet, I hope they will all, the local uh, traditions will all preserve. The search for silence, the search for silence began, one of my spiritual masters gave me a very beautiful idea. He said, when you're playing silently, try to look behind the note. I said, what do I do? He doesn't know about music. <laughs> I'm playing beautifully, you know. So gradually it began to dawn. I looked behind. Then after some time again, the, the reminders came. Look still behind that, behind that, behind that, behind that. So gradually an, a, a, a, a, capabil, a capability to look behind the sound began to take birth, you know, behind the sound. And that brought me in direct contact with the state which is full.
we have to listen first. I mean, here in this academy, it's very peculiar because as a composer, you, your job is to just write, write music. But here first, you listen. There's a lot going on in, on an international plane and I hope we will be able to create a network where you can also have a, a, a source, a database or a, an e-book to share information, to share videos and to, to share everything and to just connect and play each other's repertoire and so it will be really rolling I think, even without money.